In this next lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can record a purchase credit memo against a purchase return record within X3. So this is kind of a, the reverse order fulfillment process that we're going through here in these steps. So uh, in this scenario, we've uh, in our previous lesson, we registered the purchase return. Um, the, retur or the return goods have made their way back to your supplier's facility. Um, now they've in part issued you a credit memo um, against that return that we're going to enter into the system. So to do so, we're going to come under our purchasing menu, then come to invoices, then invoice control. I'm going to go ahead and choose the full entry option. We'll start by coming over and clicking on the new button. specify our financial site. Here in the invoice type field, um, in this case we're going to choose the CRR option, um, which is a credit for a return, as opposed to say the CRM option, which would just be a standard credit memo for things such as pricing discrepancies, non-inventory related credits. So CRR, got our accounting date, we got the supplier who's issuing us the return. We're going to specify our AP Collective account here. Got our payment authorization. Got the date of the credit memo. Credit memo number that the vendor issued. Many of these, really, the these fields are the same as what we've discussed. Uh, when we're going through the purchase invoice process. Really the distinction lies is when we come over to our lines tab um, to load our lines grid what we're going to do is come over to this return selection tray and this will give us a register of all those returns. Um, now it's important to note that only the returns that had the uh, generate credit memo field on the return line set to yes will show up in this list. Okay, and in addition, the return needs to be validated to show up in this list. So we'll go ahead and select that item. That in part will load our line. Got the return number, the product, all our pricing information as per the original invoice. Just like before on our control tab, this will give us summary information on the on the credit memo. Summary information regarding the tax and total amount. If there were, if we were entitled to any additional credit for say the original freight fees, we can go ahead and capture that in this section. Okay. Then, just like on the purchase invoice side, how we discussed the idea of tying out uh, the amounts on our lines in our management tab. So, again, here's my $2.34 as per the original invoice. Okay, I got to go ahead and tie that out um, in this field right here. Okay, so this is the amount that my credit memo for my supplier should have been made out for. Okay. And just like before, also we have the costing tab here. Um, if we were utilizing some of the advanced um, landed cost features in the system, those details would be contained herein. Come over here, click on the Create button. That's going to go ahead and assign us a internal credit memo number. Then, just like before, we can come over here, click on the Post button to post this item on a one-off basis. Alternatively, if I close page out of here, uh, under my invoices block, I could come to this invoice validation. And I could go ahead and validate the items through this one also. So I could come in here and say, 
you know, validate for me all credit memos. Come over here and click on OK. And that'll go ahead and give us a log file showing us the credit memos that have been validated. Okay. From an inquiry perspective, uh, purchasing inquiries, we can come under uh, the invoices block here. I could come into my list of invoices. Then if I want to inquire just on the particular credit memos, here in my invoice type section, I can go ahead and uncheck the invoice and redo my search. Then that will provide me with a result set of just my credit memos. Okay, supplier, monetary amount, there's your source document number. And just like on the other inquiries, if I come to my first field, click on the action button, this provides me with the capability of tunneling back to my uh, original credit memo. Okay, so those are all the primary uh, steps that are involved in registering a purchase credit memo as well as looking up uh, the credit memos through our inquiry functions in X3.